Chapter 17 Kitty had come out from under the influence of her sedative and Dr. Trimble was leaving her out for a time. He didn't believe in making childbirth too easy for his patients. When the pain had got too bad, he'd give her something else again to ease them, but in the meantime, he just let nature take its course. He had an idea that it was good for the fathers too. Let them stew in their own juice a little, Doc Trimble thought grimly. Let him find out what a woman went through when she brought his child into the world. Give him something to think about for a while. Well, Sam Sloan was getting something to think about. He was striding up and down in the darkness outside the express station, following a beaten path to the corral and back. When he reached the far end of the course, he had to strain to hear Kitty's pain, and he turned and hurried back because it didn't seem right for him to be so far away. Then, as he neared the house, it got so bad that all he could do was try to keep from turning and running away from it again. He tried to think about all things to take his mind off Kitty, but he couldn't. He kept trying to get his thoughts on Pat and Ezra in town, but it wasn't of any use. He couldn't even make out to worry about Ezra. Kitty was so much more important, and he knew she was dying, and he didn't think that Doc Trimble even cared. He, he sort of fiercely suspected that the Doc wished that she'd up and die so he could get back to Dutch Springs and the bottle that Sam had torn away from him. He suspected Trimble was being a cynical old fella who hated all of his patients just because he had to stay relatively sober at times to even care for them. Sam was striding back and forth towards the corral when he heard a buckboard driving up in front of the station. He whirled and sprinted back in time to intercept Sally Stevens as she stepped out of the vehicle. She grabbed his arm and demanded, How is she, Sam? I came as fast as I could. You, you can hear how she is, Sam muttered. I'm sure glad you're here, Sally. I don't trust that Doc Tremble no how. Sally laughed lightly and patted his arm. I'm not nearly as worried about Kitty as I am about Pat right now. Do you know what they're saying about him, Sam? About Pat and Ezra? Yeah, I know all about it. Pat wants me to come into town to help them, but... I don't see how I can. Not with Kitty so bad off. I, I gotta stay here just in case. Sally stopped dead on still on the threshold into the station. She turned slowly and asked in a tumultuous voice, Have you seen Pat? Sure, and he's all right. Just a, a, got one bullet through the shoulder, Sam scoffed. Just as soon as he gets Ezra back in jail, I don't see what... What's that? About Ezra back in jail? And you say that Pat's wounded? Sally's voice rose hysterically. He's not so bad, he ain't. You see, he knocked Ezra out when he come out here and climbed in the window and scared Kitty plumb out of her wits. So Pat, he loaded him into the buckboard and took him to jail, and he wants me to come and help him, but I, I don't see how... Miss Stevens? said Doc Trimble cheerfully from inside. You're just in time to help me. Now, if we can just get rid of that fat-headed husband, you and I had best get right to work. You bet we're going to get rid of him, Sally blazed out. How dare you hang around here, Sam Sloan, when Pat and Ezra need you? Well, now, now I... Sam backed away uneasily. You get on a horse and you ride for town. Don't you dare come back till everything is fixed up. She stepped in and slammed the door shut to emphasize her words. Sam shook his head and started towards the corrals at a shambling trot. It didn't seem like dang nabbit that a, that a man had any rights at all when a baby was being born. He just didn't count no how. The way the women acted, you'd think fathers weren't even necessary. Couldn't blame Sally, though. He guessed she was worried about Pat. Though Sam couldn't see for the life of him why, Pat, he could take care of himself with one arm shot off. Pat was a, still a match for Harlow and Triple and all the rest. But Sam didn't waste any time getting his fastest horse saddle. 
Some of Sally's urgency had been communicated to him. She had come at once to help Kitty, even though she was worried to death about her husband, so Sam reckoned that he couldn't do any less. He flung himself in a saddle and let the horse out. He didn't slow as he went past the lit station where Sally and the doc were watching over Kitty. He headed north and put all his riding skills into the job of covering the miles to Dutch Springs in the shortest time possible. Men were milling about the streets and the hitch rail in front of the Gold Eagle with lines of horses when Sam thundered into town. He pulled up and leapt from the saddle and trotted into the pack saloon. He saw the tall figure of Triple at the bar with Pat's silver badge gleaming on his vest and the new sheriff was haraguing the other men in the saloon when Sam strode in. Ain't no telling who he'll kill tonight, fellas, and that's a fact, Triple was proclaiming. I'd say there ain't no woman, man, or child in the valley that's safe in their beds till that varmint's been safely strung up. When he escaped that posse out there this afternoon, I got a notion that he headed down towards Pinky Wright's horse ranch, and that's where I'm going to hunt for him next. Who's riding with me? A shout went up from the men who were willing to accept Triple's leadership, and by that time Sam had threaded his way amongst them until he stood directly in front of Triple. I reckon that talk you're making is headed for Ezra, he said angrily. Triple glanced down at the wiry little pony rider express as though irritated by this interruption. I reckon it is, little feller. Anything you gotta say about it? Only that you're lying when you say that Ezra done any of them things. There was instant silence in the saloon. Men began to stride back to get out of the way between the two in front of the bar. Trippo's arms were folded across his chest contemptuously while Sam waited for him to take up the challenge of his words. There was a commotion in the doorway just then. A young puncher plunged into the saloon shouting, Hey, you fellers! Know what? Ezra's in the jail right now. Ezra's locked up in the jail right now in Dutch Springs. What's that? Trippo whirled on him, disregarding Sam for the moment. What cussed foolishness is that? We all know that Pat Stevens turned him loose last night. Yeah, but Pat, he brought him back too. The young Waddy announced triumphantly, not more than an hour ago. And Mr. Winters and John Boyd and Vern Pike are guarding him on account he ain't got no key to keep him locked up with. You hear that, fellers? Triple bellowed. That one-eyed low-down murderer right now is where we can get our hands on him. What are we waiting for? Let's go string him up. A roar of approval answered him, and there was a surge towards the door. Sam darted aside and leapt atop a card table standing against the wall. His guns were drawn, and his lips snarled back from his teeth as he crouched above the others, dominating the room. He sent two bullets through the swinging doors above the heads of those struggling to get out, and then lowered the twin muzzles of his six-gun and ordered coldly. Don't nobody move. I'll drill daylight through the first one that reaches for a gun or takes a step towards that door. Nobody moved. Not one reached for a gun. Most of those confronted by his gun scarcely breathed. They all knew Sam Salone. They knew he wasn't bluffing and that the slightest movement might bring death spewing from his guns. He straightened slowly and swung one of his guns in a short arc to carelessly cover Trippo, the rangy Texan. I don't know what this is all about. I know that Pat Stevens brung Ezra into jail while this here smart sheriff and a dozen posses were out looking for him, and I'm gonna see that he stays there till Pat decides what he's gonna do. Without warning, Pat fired his right-hand gun off at an angle from where he seemingly looked. One of Triple's VX riders fell back with a groan and grabbed at his shattered wrist while his half-drawn gun clattered to the floor. Don't none of you be trying that, Sam advised them. I aim to keep this here meeting orderly and gentle until Pat comes back. Every man inside the saloon tensed, 
and looked towards the door as the sound of a wild, galloping team came up the street from the south. It stopped outside, and boot heels pounded hard on the boardwalk. Panky Wright flung open the doors and took in the situation at a glance. It's all right, Sam, he called out loudly. We've got Ezra right outside now, and Pat says who's got a rope for a necktie party. Pat says that? gasped Sam. He slowly lowered his guns. Well, a look of utter dismay spread over his dark face. Well, come on outside and see for yourself, Pinky invited. All of you that want to have a hand in stringing up the worst murderer that's ever been caught red-handed in the valley. There was a concerted rush to the door. Sam Salone silently holstered his guns and climbed down from the table and followed the others. Word had passed up and down the street, and already a crowd was gathering around the buckboard outside, and grim-faced men were dragging Pat's unconscious prisoner from the back of it. Pat stood up on the front seat, watching the scene with his hand on the butt of his holstered forty-five and a look of hopeful expectancy on his face. He watched the tall figure of Trippo push forward through the others, and a shadow crossed his strong countenance as his face rested on the glittering badge that was rightfully his. The sheriff pushed into the crowd surrounding the prisoner and glanced down briefly at the unconscious body, and then he leapt to the back of the buckboard and pulled his gun shouting, All you VX men, this is it. Fill your hands and... Pat Stevens shot him through the left temple. He pitched head first to the ground and lay there with the bright silver badge glimmering faintly in the moonlight. Some of the men who had hold of the inert prisoner drew back with a shock of amazement. This ain't Ezra. This feller's face just comes right off. Red whiskers and all. It's it's a rubber mask, by golly. It's, it's used as our load. It's fixed up just to look like Ezra. Take him out and hang him, grated Pat. I ain't rightfully sheriff, and this one here was one time when I'm glad I ain't. There ain't no one to interfere with you while you string that buzzard up. None of the mob really understood this amazing transformation of the murderer into the solid body of Eusus Arlo, but they were all so happy about it that they didn't stop to be asking any questions. While they hustled him off to the nearest cottonwood tree, Pat stepped down from the buckboard and leaned over triple. He unpinned the badge and straightened up with it in the palm of his hand, looking at it thoughtfully. Sam came forward from the boardwalk and suggested, Pin it back on where it belongs, Pat. I reckon Powder Valley will be plenty glad to get you back for sheriff without no election. Pat hesitated. He glanced down the street, where the mob of angry ranchers were dragging Arlo off to hang him, and then he shook his head. Not right yet, I reckon. He smiled briefly then thrust the badge into his pocket. Maybe I'll put it on again after it's too late for the law to step in and stop the only lynching that I ever saw that I plumb approved of. Come on, let's you and me ride to the jail and see if Ezra has come back to consciousness yet. And then you and me, we got a date to go meet your new son. End of chapter 17